be the three, the two, then the silent one. So in three, two. Good evening. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, October 9, 2023. In accordance with board's policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members, will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an, an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faye or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faye, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Thank you, Ms. Hari. Good evening. Ms. Harvey? Present. Mr. Young? Present. Ms. Hen? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Faye, will you now please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Thank you. Ms. D Dr. D. Donato? Present. Dr. Grimm? Present. Mr. Hartlove? Present. Mr. Corns? Mr. Dixit? Present. Ms. Shea? Present. Mr. Cahoot? I'm going to say this wrong, so sorry, Brad. <laughs> Please tell Present. me again. Mr. Cahoogin. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Plate? Present. Ms. Stansberry? Present. Ms. Webster? Present. Ms. Shanahan? Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Kim Ferguson. Thank you. Cameron Williams. Thank you. Melissa Winstead. Homer McCall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. We will uh, jump right into our first contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Hartlow. Good evening, everyone. Um, the first question uh the first contract i have is a uh, cwa-132-23 elementary english language arts curriculum this is an increase in the maximum uh contract spending authority um uh, this contract was discussed at the curriculum committee on october 5th and will continue to provide for elementary english language arts curriculum for students in grades k through five as well as providing uh, professional learning for teachers and administrators. The total increase is $5 million. It's broken down under the fiscal impact section. The uh, There's one uh, award vendor that's Hooten Mifflin Harcourt Pu Publishing uh, Company, and uh, that's listed under the contract award vendor information. Um, Ms. And Hen, I see you have a question. I'm sorry, Mr. Hartlove, please continue. Ms. Hen, no, all I was name. gonna say is, is we have staff on hand to answer your questions. <laughs> Great, thank you. Ms. Hen? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, my question has to do with the spending authority increase requested for this contract. A uh, little over four months ago, the board approved the original contract request with spending authority of $10 million. Um, you're requesting an additional $5 million or 50% more um, than the board requested five month or four months ago. Um, and according to our contract exhibit, there's an estimated 1 million in expenditures for this year. So with an available 9 million in additional spending authority, my question is why the need to increase the spending authority now? 
Dr. Giannata, do you want to go first or you want me to lean in? Um, so if you want to get started, and then I can follow up. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Good evening, afternoon. I don't even know what time it is, <laughs> um, but hello, everyone. So <clears throat> the estimated uh, spending of one million is the estimated additional spending of the additional spending authority. So the initial purchase of HMH took us right up to the line of that 10 million. So um, the original contract spending authority, which covered the implementation for um, grades K through five in all of the schools, um, has us pretty close to that 10 million mark right now, just in that year one rollout. So the anticipated spending that you're referencing on the exhibit is about how much of the additional spending authority do we anticipate wanting to spend this year, which is approximately a million dollars um, a year, which is where they got the 5 million additional ask. OK, thank you for that clarification sure. because total spend had been indicated on the prior exhibit template and I didn't see it on this template. So I, I think we're adjusting to the new template and maybe that's something we can take back for clarification for ourselves, but um, that's that's on us to try to understand how we communicate that most effectively with the new template. Sure, and, and Mr. Hartlove, I would ask if we could include that information because previously we did see the total historical spend um, on contract approval requests, and that's very helpful. That would have saved me having to ask that question as that would have provided the clarification. I hear you. Shay, that's for this fiscal year, correct? That was, or Dr. DiNanano, that was the initial outlay. Yeah, so we're um, the initial expenditure for the rollout was close to the the ten million ask, but where the reason that we're coming back for the increase is that we've heard so much feedback, and I'm sure you can watch if you're interested the the robust discussion from curriculum committee. But um, there's a couple of specific things that schools are requesting. Uh, so one thing I want to call out while we're talking about the exhibit is it should also say that that anticipated spending will not be one hundred percent operating for the increase um, because many schools are seeking the ability to use some of their grant funding through Title I and some of the other grant funds they have to be able to buy supplemental materials. So we are projecting a million of that increase based on the requests we've gotten from schools, some of the work we've done in uh, collaboration with the Office of Special Education, um, and then uh, the original 10 million included professional learning for years one and two. So this also gives us the flexibility to be able to have ongoing professional learning in years three through five, which is critically important in a district like ours because you know how many new teachers and new principals we onboard every year. Sure, and I was pleased to see the um, budgeted spend for professional learning because yes, that's a big part of it. In from, from the board. Um, so I appreciate that and I also appreciated the detail provided in your justification and I saw the additional few use cases that were mentioned, um, the use of um, schools being able to purchase supplemental materials. I did want to ask about that briefly. Um, as I understood it, this was supposed to be all contain all inclusive in terms of materials that yeah teachers would need. Can you speak to the supplemental materials that sure can. imagine will be purchased using this? Thank Again, you. Again, Dr. Gina, okay if I go first or do you sure, want to jump for it? Okay. You're good. Um, so a um, couple things. So one was the vocabulary cards. So um, the vocabulary cards were a part of the purchase for grades K through two. They did not exist as of June for grades three through five other than digitally, but HMH is as big a company as they are. They're very responsive and they heard from districts all across the country that wanted them for their intermediate learners and specifically for multilingual learners for whom building that voc academic vocabulary is critically important. Um, so that's one thing that has been identified as a new ask that wasn't even available when we did the purchase order in June. Um, second, um, in our pilot, we piloted, they have uh, supplemental resources like writer's notebooks or um, writer's journals. When we piloted it, the pilot teacher said, hit or miss, some teachers liked them, some teachers didn't. So in an effort to really be responsive and, and move forward, we didn't think that they warranted universal purchase for the whole system. But we've heard from some schools for whom writing is their priority focus, that the teachers really think that would be a valuable resource and schools are looking to purchase those differentially than using some other type of composition notebook. Um, same thing with, um, they have know it, show it journals. Um, again, 
uh, we're trying to really empower teachers and schools to make thoughtful decisions of purchasing it at point of use. So all teachers have these resources available digitally. So that's part of that all in all inclusive. It's all right there. Um, this is if you want to buy them in print by students as a consumable, it becomes a supplemental purchase. And some of our schools um, serving different groups of students and some of that population are really advocating that that would be meaningful for their teachers to be able to do that. So those are just three examples of what we've seen that we would put under that um, umbrella. Thank you for that level of detail. My my last question is this. Um, those all are, sound like great use cases, and certainly we want to make sure our schools have the materials our students need. Um, when I look at the numbers, um, an additional 50% over the total contract spend doesn't seem to add up with the uses that you describe. I'm just wondering what else we're missing. Is there anything... Yeah. Else yeah, so I can I can talk about a couple other things. So first, um, uh, close to a million is for that PD in those uh, three other years, which was built in. The other piece that came up this year was, um, which is a pretty significant ask, is that um, our open court. And it's just important for, for us all to, to look at the um, forest for the trees. So open court is right now our foundational skills curriculum. We are rounding into year four of that contract, which means that in two short years, we'll be having to think about, are we renewing that contract? Are we looking at something else? Are we thinking about another piece for the foundational skills portion? So this year we have some schools that are piloting foundational skills curriculum from HMH. If that within that you know next 18 months became the recommendation, we would want this contract spending authority to allow for that potential of expanding that for some of those grades. The other piece that has come up is um, you know that Allison Myers and the special education team have been working really diligently on that strategic plan, some of which was in process throughout to last year and into the summer. And one of the areas of growth that we've been really working collaboratively on is how do we make sure that students who are in our programs receiving services outside general education, so in our integrated service delivery model or in our non um, public separate public day schools, how do we make sure that those students and their teachers have access to on grade level material and that they have access to the fullness of the standard, which is a big part of what that strategic plan process is helping to identify as a priority for the Office of Special Education and our partnership. Um, so that's another whole population that was not a part of the original calculation that we're working to provide teacher materials that we've already started um, rolling out for that integrated support model, but that we also want to include for our non-public, um, our separate public day schools, excuse me. Um, and so those are those are big asks. Um, we also, you know, we know that for a board, it's not great to come back lots and lots of times. So we're trying to anticipate, um, you know, some of those things on the horizon. So again, as you well know, for spending authority, it doesn't mean that we're going to spend it all, right? This is just us trying to make sure that we're being um, thoughtful and intentional about some of those big asks um, that might get more at the heart of what you're talking about. In addition to our um, um, some of our schools have increasing amounts of money to support uh, supplemental resources, and we actually prefer when they spend them on core evidence-based resources instead of reinventing the wheel. So that was um, a lot of the thinking that went behind that collaborative approach um, to do that. Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Shea. And, and one concept that might help with estimating mm -hmm. is the contingency concept when we approve a construction. Mm -hmm contract. There's oh, that built-in contingency to allow for things such as enrollment variation yeah. and other use cases that we haven't thought of and latitude for schools to purchase what they need, especially with a pilot or coming off a pilot because you yeah. don't know what you need. You don't going. know, right. We, and I right. think that's great. I love that idea of exploring that contingency concept. That sounds it, great. Thank it would you. Be forward to be able to evaluate the all-in yep. true cost when we yep. first receive a contract for approval. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there other questions? Mr. McMillian, Mr. Young, Mr. McMillian, please proceed. Good afternoon. I'm I'm just in December, the first week of December, I will have spent five years on the Board of Education, and it seems to me that we've spent, we spend and have spent a lot of money for a wide range of different programs. When are we going to get our bang for the buck? Uh, Ms. Shea, when's, when are we going to see a change in these scores? Uh, your response, please. 
Anybody, this, I don't care. Anybody can. This, this to year, Mr. McMillan, you know, I mean, you, you raise a really good point, Mr. McMillan. Of course, we need to see a change in outcomes. Um, I know our superintendent, our CAO, all of the chiefs have uh, that as a sense of urgency. But what I can also tell you is that just investing in materials doesn't change outcomes for kids. We It has to come with shifts in teacher practice and professional learning and actual feedback and implementation in the classroom, all of which has been challenging in the last several of years because of everything else that's gone on. So so I, I my goal is this year, we're gonna see a change in, um, in outcomes this year. I don't think we're going to magically, um, it, it's not magic beans that, that we're selling. It takes time for us to move uh, teacher practice at the numbers that we're talking about. Um, but investing in evidence-based high quality instructional materials is the floor, not the ceiling. It's the first step and it has been a significant focus even statewide. Look, I know that we, you're our board, and so we spend a lot of money in BCPS, but this is happening in LEAs all across the state because the state has recognized the critical importance of having that baseline of high quality instructional materials. However, purchasing materials alone doesn't change outcomes for kids. You also have to invest in working closely with the chief of schools and that team, and I'll certainly defer to Dr. DiDonato to talk about some of those efforts, as well as the professional learning to change teacher practice with right. those materials. Thank you, Ms. Shea. I, 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 this is an important con, uh, conversation. I want to make sure that we stay focused on the information that we need to consider this contract and the efficacy of the contract. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to contract number two, and for that I call on Mr. Hartlove. Sure. ARA-203-22 Materials of Instruction Discount Program. This is an extension also and also an increase in spending authority. Uh, this contract was discussed at the Curriculum Committee on February 12th. Uh, 17th, 2022. It's an extension. The extension will uh, continue to provide a wide range of classroom instructional materials and ed educational products for the Department of Academic Services and Teaching and Learning. Uh, the requested uh, increase is $1,600,000, and we have uh, 16 um, companies that are listed in the contract uh, award vendor information. Are there questions? I have a couple briefly, Ms. Harvey. Ms. Hint, please proceed. Thank you. Mr. Hartlove, is this for a two year extension? It wasn't clear on the exhibit. It, it's a, I'm ended. sorry. I'm sorry, it's a one year extension. Uh, it takes us through um, August 21st, uh, 2024. Okay, thank you. Um, that was a little confusing based on how the information is laid out on on the exhibit. So the increase that's being requested is 70% or 70% more than the current spending authority. So I was wondering what the justification is for that amount of increase for a one year extension um, based on our planned um, current fiscal year anticipated spend of 1.6 million I believe it's another 1.6 is being requested for one year and it was originally um, I guess it was originally a one year contract. Is that to support the the year extension? I take it anticipating flat level of spending. Yes, yes, that is that is my understanding. OK, and there were 16 bids received but only of uh, this is the sorry that was a question for another contract. Mm. Um, we did award this to all responsive um, bidders. OK, Correct. If, if staff could is available to speak to the increase. For that year. Sure, I can this. start. This is okay. Dr. Oh, this is Dr. Wisted. I could start Hi. with. Um, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, okay. As you uh, may recall, many schools qualify for our concentration of poverty funding through the Blueprint for Maryland's Future. And uh, we believe that uh, most of the schools have been spending on these different vendors in using their uh, concentration of poverty funding for the community schools. So we looked at what was spent the last year and then made an estimate of what we believe based on 
again, the funds that they received for this school year, what they might be spending for those community events or different things that are happening in the school for due to their community school status. So, okay, thank you, Dr. Wistad. Could you give us some examples of, of what materials schools are buying with their concentration of poverty grants under this contract? So I don't know, uh, Ms. Sandsborough, if you want to chime in as well, but it is a number of things. I mean, it can be anything if, say, they're holding a community event or like a parent night of some kind, they could be buying all kinds of things, folders, um, things to organize on the table, items for families to take home, uh, you know, different materials to run their event. So there are lots of materials that are related to take home things for families to use at home with their um, children. And then some of the vendors have realized that family engagement is a good place for them to customize kits for. So some vendors have customized kits just for family engagement events and supports and schools have been tapping into that as well. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hen, this Thank is you. Melanie. I'm sorry, please proceed. I'm sorry, this is Melanie Webster, and I just wanted to let you know that spending has not been flat across the history of this contract. Contract. This contract has increased spending every year. Thank you, Ms. Webster. I, I that would be helpful um, to see, although I, I'm looking at the current fiscal year anticipated spend and the um, the extent, the increase that's requested. So using those limited data points, I appreciate that information. Certainly. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to contract three. For that, I call on Mr. Hartlow. GDA-305-24 School Psychologist uh, psychologist uh, services. Um, this is a, a new contract uh, that would run runs through June 30th, 2026. Contract will provide staffing of school psychologists uh, for the Office of Student uh, Support Services. Vendors will provide temporary school psychologists to cover vacant positions in schools that currently do not have uh, a school psychologist. Uh, the total uh, Contract spend the maximum contract spending authority is two million six hundred sixty four thousand dollars. And Ms. Ferguson is here. If you have any questions, I'm sorry, Dr. There, Fer I'm sorry, Dr. Ferguson. Are there any questions? I have one, Ms. Harvey, unless my colleagues um, would like to go first if they have any. Uh, I'm not hearing <laughs> you, so Ms. Hen, please proceed. Thank you. How many schools are currently without dedicated school psychologists? So right now we have a count. Um, we have a we have 8.2 vacancies, uh, but that doesn't mean that um, that's eight schools because they're all split mm -hmm. um, for the most part. Um, these particular, this particular contract is actually going to be targeted to um, for some of our schools that are um, supported by the CCEIS and that's the Comprehensive Coordinated Early Intervention Services Program. And um, they'll be doing some specific work uh, in those schools. Okay, and I see that it's 100% grant funded. Which yes. Is fantastic. Um, what is the source of those grants funds? Are so it's the CCEIS grant, yeah. the Comprehensive Coordinated Early Intervening Services Grant. Okay, and who provides that? I'm not familiar with that grant, Dr. Ferguson, if you wouldn't mind. Yes, yeah. so that grant actually falls under the Department of Special Education. Um, and of course, psychological services is a related service. So they kind of toggle in between um, student support services and uh, special education services. Specifically, we were able to um, to use these grant funds before schools that are identified um, under the CCEIS grant for having an over identification of students with intellectual disabilities. 
um, and specifically these school psychologists will be working in those schools to kind of get to the root cause of that issue and then also provide some training to other school psychologists around um, how to um, reduce that over identification of students uh, with that particular disability. OK, is is that um, their primary focus then? In, right, in so that's why we were able to use the grant funds. These populations. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson. Welcome. Thank you. Are there any further questions? OK, we'll move on to the next contract for that. I call on Mr. Hartlove. Sure, uh, GDA-303-24 Teletherapy Services. This is another new contract uh, that would run through December 27th, 2025. Uh, this contract will expand access to behavioral health services by providing students in grades 9 through 12 with access to live and on-demand wellness courses, exercises, assessments, as well as uh, consultation with mental health co counselors and clinicians in a virtual format delivered via laptop or mobile device. Uh, this is a contract that we procured under uh, SourceWell. Uh, the maximum spending authority is $1,800,000 and the vendor is Talkspace Provider Network PA. And Dr. Ferguson is here if you have questions. Are there any questions? I have two, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Dr. Ferguson, will all students be able to use these services or will they require a referral from a school counselor or anyone? Do no, I get this it? Is, the the self-guided lessons are for all students in grades nine through twelve. So all students have access to the um to the app in high school. Okay. And it doesn't it doesn't require a referral. OK, but they won't have access to um, therapy sessions. I see this so, is being awarded to Talkspace. Right, so the text therapy, um, so certainly students can always talk to their, um, to their school counselors, but in this particular contract, oh, sorry, my light just went out, not moving around enough. Um, <laughs> in this particular contract, the students will have, have access to two different platforms. They'll have the self-guided lessons where you go in and, there are exercises you can do if you say that you, you know, you need some breathing exercises, those things are there and they're self-guided. They'll also have access to what we're calling text therapy, and that does connect a student to a licensed provider based upon the evaluation of their needs and their preferences. So they'll, um, what we have uh, with this particular contract, um, we'll be able to have a cadre of providers just for Baltimore County Public Schools, because as you know, we require any any person that is interacting with our students to go through our fingerprinting process. So they will, that cadre of providers will go through our process and they will only be able to communicate with students, our students by way of text. And that is the next, that's a step beyond the self-guided lessons. And every student has access to that opportunity. That's really exciting. I'm I'm very excited by this offering and that we can um, offer it to our students. Um, has and and I'm glad that we're doing the screening and ensuring that those who have access to our Absolutely. most vulnerable students, you know, that we're we're checking on them. So that's fantastic. Um, was I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Will um, Talkspace sign our student data privacy agreement? Absolutely. And the information. Absolutely. And so the, the, the actual, once a student engages in text therapy with a student, it is actually HIPAA, HIPAA protected. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's between the student and the therapist at that point. The data that we'll get is really aggregate data, how many kids are accessing the platform, um, how many students have accessed the text therapy. We'll get numbers, but we won't be able to get the content of those conversations because they are HIPAA protected. Perfect, including PI, all PII. I imagine yeah, so who's using the way the app. app works. It's just like any other app. Once you you have to download the app, and once you decide to download it, then you have you have provided your personally identifiable information. 
Sure. So you've done that. You've done that yourself. So we're not giving information away. The students are signing up themselves if they feel the need to do so. And mm -hmm. and they will be given their own PII. So that's not something that we'll be doing uh, as a school system. And my last question, I could talk to you about this for hours. This is really exciting. Um, but will we be able to tell which schools are taking advantage of this and that aggregated data? Yeah, so we can we can get the data by school. We just can't drill down to know which kid actually accessed the um, the, um, the therapy. Fantastic. But certainly numbers by school, numbers by system that that's we can get that information from Talkspace, but we won't be able to get any individual student information. Terrific. And this is also grant funded. It is grant funded. Perfect and and sustainable. These are um, grants that we. So right now it's so once again, it is the CCEIS grants uh, grant that part of that grant is an actual prevention and we're looking at this as a prevention for students, uh, prevention from um, having the to for suspension, prevention for it, for any other issues that may come along in the future. So we're hopeful that these grant funds will be able to um, we'll get them each year. They are dependent upon whether or not our district is named as a CCEIS school. So um, right now we're we're through 2025. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're hopeful that we'll be able to continue the funding as we move forward. But we're very excited about this opportunity for our high school students. As am I. This is terrific. And will Talkspace therapists have access to, say, the Center for School Safety if they encounter any students who are at risk that might need further intervention? Are they able to access those resources to connect um, to first responders in terms of so crisis? That they crisis? What will happen is once we um, we get through approval, uh, Talkspace will be able to um, kind of personalize their app. So right now, um, if you go to their app, it, they have some general natural national resources that are available, but we're, we'll be able to add in the Baltimore County resources. So when the kids download the app for our system, because we're paying for that app, it'll be personalized for Baltimore County. So it'll have Baltimore County and talk space. You know, we'll, our logo will be all over the app um, because we're partnering with them only for the for our kids, right? So, and then they'll be able to see Baltimore County resources as well. We're looking to hopefully have an opportunity to, for when kids, if they want to talk to their school counselor, then that's also something that they can see on that page as well. So we're, like I said, again, we're very excited about the opportunity and um, looking forward to rolling this out. Thank you. I've been very impressed also with the Maryland Center for School Safety. So as we're adding resources, if that's something that we can consider adding as well, if they're willing to take referrals. Thank you very much, Dr. Ferguson. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, we'll move to contract number five. For that, I call on Mr. Hardlove. Thank you. MWE-804-23 Affordable Care Act ACA Compliance and Administration. Uh, this is an extension and an increase. Um, approval is requested to extend the contract for the first option year and increase contract spending authority by $90,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $180,000 with one awarded contract con contractor approved by the Board of uh, by the board on Tuesday, December 6th. This contract will provide ACA compliance and administration for the Department of Human Resources. Um, and the vendor is Bolton Partners. Are there questions? Hearing none, we'll move to contract number six. And for that, I call on Mr. Harla. Yes, PCR-230-09 Voluntary Long-Term Disability Insurance. Uh, this contract modification is for informational purposes only and will continue to provide for continued use of voluntary long-term disability insurance 
services for BCPS employees. The approval is requested to extend the contract for five years with one awarded vendor approved by the board on August 12th, 2008. And this is paid one. This is paid by employees. Um, uh, the contribution that employees made in 2023 was $1,913,197.69. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Hartlow. Yes, JBO-707-21 Radio Communications Master Contract 2018. Uh, this contract modification will provide for the continued purchase and lease of schools and vehicle Motorola radio systems, components, tracking systems, dispatching systems, maintenance accessories, and associated services. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $2,104,021, bringing revised total contract spending to $5,804,021 with 10 awarded contractors. Um, and the modification, a portion of this uh, contract modification increase is based upon current school safety radio request received from principals based upon recommendation uh, the re a recommendation of school safety managers and supported by the executive director of schools. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract. For that, I call on Mr. Hartlove. Yes, this is a new contract, CWA-103-24. Uh, personal protective equipment and uniforms. It's um, a five year contract. Um, this contract will provide for weekly uniform rentals and laundering services for all appropriate staff in transportation and facilities. It also will provide uh, for personal protective equipment uh, and uniforms for the uh, Office of Transportation. The total contract is $420,000 through a company by the name of Ace Uniform Incorporated. Are there any questions? Mr. McMillian. I'm curious, can you give me an example? It says appropriate staff and transportation facilities. Who's appropriate staff? Dr. Grimm looks like he's ready to jump up here. Go ahead, Dr. Grimm. Yep, good evening, Mr. McMillian. It, it's any staff, it's it's mainly fleet staff and maintenance workers who have this built into their contract. Um, it's the uniforms that they require uh, when they're when they're working basically and they're laundered in part through this contract as well. So we're talking mechanics? Yes, sir. And so it won't be bus drivers and none of those people? No, sir. This is actually, and it, we, we've done this before, this is just a new contract for this. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. NTA-510-23 purchase of replacement and additional motor vehicles. This is a contract extension. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year with six awarded vendors approved uh, by the board on February 14th, 2023. Uh, this contract modification will exercise the third of four optional year extensions. FY24 expenditures will total 55 vehicles, 25 board approved vehicles for fleet growth and an additional 30 standard replacement vehicles. Uh, this is a piggyback of a Baltimore County government uh, contract and the names of the um, the um, Auto dealerships are listed under contract award vendor information. Oh, in the total, I'm sorry, the total maximum is $14,500,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract, Mr. Hartlow. Yes, this is an assignment a change in vendor name. JBO-725-19 vehicle parts and materials and fasteners. Uh, it's just simply uh, the vendor uh, name or the contract has been assigned from IEH Auto Parts LLC DBA Auto Plus Auto Parts to Elliott 
Auto Supply Company Incorporated DBA Factory manufa um, Factory Motor Parts. So just assignment of the contract. Otherwise, nothing changes. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will move to the next contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixit. Good evening. The next contract is JME 507-21. And this is for operation of Hereford High School Waste Water Treatment Facility. This is request for your approval is for extending it by one year. And it will uh, help us with a licensed operator to operate that plant. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract. Mr. Dixit. Uh, next contract is KSH 309 19. This is for inspection, maintenance, repair, and installation for bleachers and stadium seating. The request is to modify the amount. Uh, increase the spending authority by $296,000 and that will uh, change the amount, total amount to $991,000. The reason for this request is primarily for a project that has been approved under Aging School Project, which was an uh, Aging School Program, which was not included in the original estimate. Are there any questions? Ms. Harvey, I have one. Ms. Hen, please proceed. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Dixit. Good evening. Um, thank you for that information that this is for an aging schools um, project. Those funds are tracked in the operating budget versus capital? My understanding is that those funds are added to capital budget. I'm Mr. Hartlove to confirm that. That is the case. So, yeah. Okay, because it's not identified under funding source. Yeah. Um, which lists one hundred percent operating. So. Yeah, that's. I uh, believe, unless Ms. Uh, Webster is going to correct me, I believe that's an error on our part. I Thank can you. confirm. Um, last last I understood aging school money lived within the capital budget, but I will confirm that. Thank you, Ms. Webster. Is that the case? Do you know offhand for all state um, capital funds? I'm referring to capital funds. I should say um, construction funds. No, to my knowledge, the only um, construction that lives within the operating identified construction projects that live within the operating budget are these aging school projects. OK. Because they would fall under maintenance, I'm guessing. I, I'm not sure of the reasoning, but I can confirm that that's the case. OK, thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. OK, the next contract is for uh, one moment, Mr. Dixit. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed. Next contract is DEI 602-24, and that's for desktop delivery office supplies. It is for the paper. Uh, uh, it's, it's for the it is to extend the contract option to extend the contract for purchase of paper and these are under the Oakland County Michigan America Safe program contract number 10418 the requested amount is three million dollar fifty thousand are there questions I have Hearing one that? oh I'm sorry Miss Hen please proceed Thank you, Ms. Harvey. I was just curious as to why paper wasn't being procured under a master paper contract and why there's a special contract um, for this office for paper. Ms. Webster can help us. 
Um, this contract is a cooperative contract issued by the America Saves um, program, which has the best price for paper out there. So that's why we're, we've identified this. The uh, paper is brought into uh, the warehouse, logistics warehouse, and from there it is requested by the individual schools and offices. Thank you. I, I misunderstood the contract description when it said for the Office of Logistics, thinking we were just acquiring paper for that office and not. No, this no is it's for the master paper contract. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Uh, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is CWA-100-23. This is for cabling and low voltage system maintenance. The request is for a second of the three one year extension available on the original contract. And the maximum authority spending authority is $2 million. Are there questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is JBO-714-23 for chiller and AHU air handling unit replacement uh, for Newtown Elementary School. The project is a capital project and the, it is under the program that has already been approved by the board. Lowest bidder is BMC services. There were five bids that were received. And the amount is $1,148,400, which includes contingency. Uh, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Dixon, when did we open up Newtown? How old of a school is that? I don't have the age in front of me, but I can get back to you on that. Let me see if I have in my package. Uh, so school opened in 2001. So Thank it's you. about 22 years old. Yeah. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is NTA-519-23 for firearm systems for Perial High School. The contract, uh, the, the project was part of the capital improvement program approved by the board. And the lowest bidder is FCR Enterprises. There were two bids received. The total amount of the requested uh, cost is $921,360, including contingencies. Are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is NGO-405-23 for Pinewood Elementary School, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and roof partial roof replacement. Uh, the project was part of the capital program approved by the board. The amount is $8,933,100. There were three bids received, and the lowest bidder. I'm trying to get the name of that. The lowest bidder is Towson Mechanical of Parkwood, Maryland. Are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixon, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is DEI-604-23 for the chiller replacement for Ridge Buxton School. There were six bids received. The amount is $682,660, including contingency, and the lowest bidder is BMC Services. Are there any questions? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. 
The next contract is GDA-312-22. This is an on-call architectural consultants design services for roof repair and replacement. The request is for consent to the assignment. Sorry about that. The request is for the consent to the assignment of this contract from Gilbert Architect Incorporated to Gilbert Architect LLC. There are six other award contractors uh, on the original contract, and the total amount is $3 million for all six of them, or seven of them. Are there any questions? I hear none, so thank you, Mr. Dixit. Thank you very much. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 19 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Young. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Uh, the question is on the recommended approval contracts 1 through 19 for board action. Uh, may we have a roll call vote, Ms. Faye? Yes, thank you. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. Contracts 119, 1 through 19 will be moved forward to the full board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, November 6, 2023 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.